Hey everybody, Nick Espinoza, your chief security fanatic here. And it is the very last day of the 100 million years that has been the year 2020. What a just an insane year for so many reasons. Wow, you don't even know where to begin with this. So with that, I kind of wanted to look forward to 2021 because I think we all want to put 2020 behind us for whatever reason that is, whether it's coronavirus or insane elections or anything else, and focus on 2021 and what is going to be coming up in cybersecurity. And with that, these are my predictions. And I wanted to do this as one of my very last posts for the year, because in less than 24 hours, it's going to be 2021. And even though the, there's a new number, I think we're going to have a lot of 2020 left over just bleeding right into tomorrow. But with that, Let's go through my predictions uh, of what I think are going to be some of the biggest trends and going ons in the cybersecurity community and cybersecurity world. And so stick with me because I think I've got some pretty interesting thoughts on this. And so let's dive right in. This year in 2020, we saw a massive exodus around March and April, uh, basically of corporations and organizations moving to remote. That is going to continue. We already know that the big players of, of the world, the big companies like the Googles of the world have already said stay home. And by virtue of that, that is gonna carry into 2021. But as we saw a focus on, on basically remote workers, that is gonna to continue to increase because home networks are super insecure. And so phishing employees, as well as attempting to fish people while they're at home is going to be a very, uh, a very focused thing for cyber criminals. Finding those home users and trying to exploit them, infect them, hijack them, fish them, whatever it is, is going to be essentially uh, top billing for a lot of cyber criminals and ransomware gangs out there. So we need to make sure that we are securing our homes in a much more effective manner. And I think by virtue of that, as we are working from home, this dovetails into my next point, which is that a lot of legacy security architecture essentially is gonna to continue to keep us vulnerable until it is replaced. And I will get to another point that I hope helps with this uh, in a bit, but basically uh, just this year, as we are responding to brand new clients that are calling us saying, hey, I've never worked with you before, but we just got hit. A lot of it is old legacy architecture like VPNs, uh, you know, that old RDS server that you might have open that is just allowing remote desktop uh, unchecked to the internet. We saw multiple breaches with that. That is going to continue on as companies are continuing to move remote, but not necessarily making the best choices, which I really think under, underscores the point that IT personnel oftentimes is not cybersecurity personnel. We need them both. We're married at the hip, but the training and the focus oftentimes is different. So with that, we need to really start focusing on replacing that legacy security architecture because I think we're going to see a lot of a lot a lot of data breaches and hits happening because people are running that old PPTP Microsoft VPN or they're not moving to uh, to newer technologies like software defined perimeter and better identity management and all of that. Uh, you know, and I think those are going to probably be other focuses that we have uh, for 2021 and beyond as we've already been focusing on identity management. But I think about and beyond that. And my next point here is that we are going to be looking at our supply chain, uh, essentially for security assurance in a way that we've been talking about uh, for the last few years. NIST, the National Institute for Standards and Technology came out, I want to say it was around 2017. And one of the big pushes was to get that supply chain assurance. The DOD this year in the United States took that to the next level with the CMMC requiring everybody essentially to get certified. And that includes the DOD's entire supply chain. And so by virtue of that, when we are looking at data breaches, some of the largest data breaches, and as I, as I have here, SolarWinds owes all of us a really nice bottle of scotch or whatever you drink, because that is the quintessential supply chain breach. And before them in 2020, it was BlackBot, where all of these organizations, including philanthropic and, and uh, nonprofit organizations were using them and getting hit. Supply chain assurance has to be a focus for 2021. And a lot of organizations are really starting to look at that saying, we know we're secure or we're above average in security as we continuously improve, but are the people that are supplying us, are they, uh, basically secure as well. 
are they getting our data hit? And, and that also really underscores a lot of the critical sectors that we saw in 2020 get hit, not directly the institution, but the suppliers in some way, shape or form to those institutions. That's a huge problem that I think we're gonna have to be combating. And so by virtue of that, when we are talking about supply chain assurance, we need to then start talking about our cloud infrastructure because it's gonna to continue to be leaky. Now, if you watch or listen to me on a regular basis, you know that every Sunday, is breaches of the week. And so many of these are Amazon AWS S3 buckets that somebody just didn't secure because nobody knows how to configure these damn things or Azure blobs or Google's cloud or whatever storage capacity you're using has been misconfigured. And so by virtue of that, colleagues of mine can simply go in and say, oh, everything is exposed. I can see it without a password. I have, I report on multiples of those every single week. And that is a very serious issue. And when I am reporting on these breaches, we see this from every sector, uh, basically every vertical that you can think of. But I think, which goes to my next point, is that the hardest hit sector in 2021 is going to be healthcare. And I think the entire coronavirus or COVID-19 situation proved that. We saw an absolute ramp up of basically attacks against the supply chain and medical infrastructure, whether they were going after uh, vaccines, whether we saw supply chains disrupted due to ransomware, the medical vertical, basically the healthcare industry itself is notoriously and has been insecure. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about those massive hospitals out there. I got to interview some CISOs and directors of cybersecurity with my, due to my work with the COVID-19 Cyber Threat Coalition. A lot of them have really been on the ball but we have little small mom and pop medical practices all the way up to midsize, up to enterprise level. And a lot of this throughout their supply chains are insecure, not to mention running lax cybersecurity as well. And I think that's a very serious problem, but they're not the only vertical that is gonna get hit pretty hard because if we are looking historically and consistently, including numbers for 2019 and 2020 as, as we have them right now, the next hardest hit, and this is my next point, is going to be the financial sector. The financial sector, like healthcare, has its own level of compliances for cybersecurity frameworks and disclosures. But if you're looking at the numbers from 2019, about 62%, over 60% of the records that were leaked were from financial institutions. And every week in my breaches video, I've got a ton of healthcare and I've got a ton of banks or accounting firms <clears throat> or financial institutions that are basically handling or managing money for you and everybody else. That is a huge problem. And I think it really speaks to uh, the problem that we have with, let's say, budgeting and, and all of that. You know, for, for the longest time, and this is my next point, we've been the redheaded stepchild in the room. CISOs, our chief information security officers, are now going to start really getting the respect that, that, they, that they deserve. We are going to be elevated more towards the C-level. And we're going to still be Jan Brady to, to Marsha Brady, but nevertheless, we're going to have a seat at the table, I think, in a way in many organizations, especially at the enterprise level, and as that pushes down, in a way that we just haven't had before. I can't tell you how many CISOs that I have personally worked with that are pigeonholed under a CFO or at the, they're at the VP level, and they don't actually get the same equal footing as a CIO or a CFO when you are looking at this. That I think is absolutely required. If the IT infrastructure that the CIO is running for the enterprise is actually keeping that, that economical engine for that organization running, the CISO is the one that is creating the shield around that engine to make sure that it is able to properly perform so the business can grow. CISOs are starting to get the respect they deserve and it's a long time coming. I've been in cybersecurity since 1998, and I am no longer the redheaded stepchild in the room. And that's been growing and changing in the last few years, and I am thrilled to see it. And so as the CISOs change, the entire world starts to change as well. And so my next point is that innovation, and this is my last point, is going to keep keeping on. We are going to keep innovating new products, whether they're cybersecurity or development or that fancy new app or that new shiny IoT device or whatever it is. But by virtue of that, we are now gonna to start to see the integration of security controls. I have literally done live demonstrations on stage where I am able to break into devices very easily because the developers simply just hard coded a password 
into the device, or you've got this new innovative product that has an amazing interface and is optimized for performance and bandwidth, but they didn't integrate good security controls into it. And that's when your password is password and you don't bother changing it. We can't forget law number four of the five laws of cybersecurity. With innovation comes opportunity for exploitation. And we are going to see a lot of this as we release another round of innovative products in 2021. But now a lot of these are going to have that focus for security, for threat awareness in a way that we simply have never had. I'm very much looking forward to that being adopted by home users specifically because of my earlier point, when we have home networks that are basically using the modem that your internet service provider gave you, we're now gonna start seeing the integration, I think, in innovative products that will give us better threat intelligence, such as consumer-based firewalls that actually have unified threat management and antivirus. We've seen a few of those out there in the years, but I, in the past few years, but I think we're gonna see that rise and increase as well. And so that is, I think, something that is coming but it needs to be faster. We need to, as we are developing, and if you are in DevOps or you're developing anything or building products and you're watching this or listening to this, make sure you are integrating security controls right into your development stage. Don't make it a bolt-on, don't make it an afterthought. We need to be integrating security controls at the coding level. And I think that's something that we are gonna to continue to see a rise of in 2021. And with that, I'd love to know your predictions. I am not the great oracle here. This is simply what I'm seeing in the industry. And I, as I am putting this out here, I would love to tell me, I would love for you to tell me your predictions. I have a lot of people in cybersecurity or in IT or in technology. What are your thoughts on 2021? Let me know and uh, hopefully we can collaborate in the future. And with that, thank you so much for, for watching this as always. This was your predictions for 2021 and hopefully we will have a healthier, safer and more secure year. And please like, share, follow me here on Facebook and Twitter at Nick AESP. And please feel free to subscribe to me at YouTube as well. And as always, stay safe and stay online. Thanks everyone.